What is up, Pisces? Welcome to your general timeless reading. This is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter placements. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. My name is Jordan. I'm a master Reiki practitioner and a tarot reader. So if you want any personal readings, Reiki sessions, mentoring sessions, or to join our Reiki courses that are available in person and online over the next two months, May and June, check out my website down below in the description box. And again, this is general. So take what resonates, leave the rest, and it's timeless. So whenever you see this is when it's most meant for you. The Pisces. Let's get into it. Pisces. Show me what I just need to see for Pisces. Pisces, I feel like you want a lot of alone time right now. Like you like a lot of quiet. I don't think you're getting it though. I don't. For Pisces. They show me a rocking chair. To me, that's someone who just wants to like relax, who wants peace. Rocking is also very good to like calm the body and the nervous system back down. Chariot in reverse. Well, it's starting to see. Well, that was quick. Knight of Pentacles, the world, Ten of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune in reverse, and the Seven of Swords in reverse. Bottom of the deck is the Magician. One, two, three, four major arcanas, and you have two cyclic energies, a Ten of Wands and an Ace of Pentacles back to back. Well, technically three with the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I actually really like this. The Chariot and the Knight of Pentacles. This feels like this time alone that you're craving is almost trying to figure out what direction you want to move in. It's like you're trying to get something started, trying to build something. It feels like the foot on the pedal, but it's almost like you're not getting anywhere. They show me a car that's kind of like stuck in mud, to be honest with you. That's really, it's what it feels like, but it's also what I see, obviously. Um, and then with the world in reverse, this is that it's like tying up loose ends. The old's not yet completed. That's why things are not quite yet moving forward, moving forward. Um, this, I don't know why this is hurting my heart space though, because this feels very much so about you, but it's almost like there's something or someone like emotionally uh, attached to here that's like lingering in the background that it's that's the attachment to the old cycle and with the ten of wands there you're it's gonna come out it's gonna come out we're gonna see it but it is it's gonna be released it's gonna be released and then you're gonna be like oh, I have my stability I have my new beginning with the wheel of fortune in reverse and the seven of swords you're gonna start recognizing the things that are standing in the way of what you are trying to create for your future very much so Bottom of the deck is the Magician followed by the Ten of Swords. Yeah, so you're trying so hard to step into your personal power and you're doing it. It's just that you have all the cyclic energy around you. You're at, you're at the end of a very important cycle, which is really, really exciting. Very exciting. Let's, uh, let's use the Sun and Moon Tarot. I was wondering why I was hearing Sun, Moon, and Stars in my head when I started your reading. That's actually the name of one of my Patreon tiers, and I was like, why am I hearing something about Patreon right now? Um, but I was like, oh wait, maybe it's the Sun and Moon Tarot deck. So let's use this one here. Show me what I most need to see for Pisces. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Ah! Give me two seconds. I dropped. <laughs> it's only the Emperor card. That is the only card that fell on the floor was the Emperor. That's crazy. Which is Divine Masculine, just like the Magician for me as a reader. So let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. Pisces. Okay. Why is the Chariot here for Pisces? <sighs> yeah, my heart is starting. My, my heart up through my neck. My neck and my ears. This is a shift you're going through. It. You're going. 
Some of you, it's an awakening. Others of you, it's the energetic upgrade, and you're starting to acclimate to the new frequency, and that's why it's difficult for the ball to get rolling, because it's like you're putting the thought out there. You're doing the manifestation, but energetically, your physical vessel is not aligned to receive that frequency quite yet, right? Your mind is, but your entire being is not quite there, right? We gotta get the head, the heart, the soul all on the same page. And right now, just your head's there, right? We're still waiting for the rest of you to align with that. That's why. So let's see. On the chariot, we have the Three of Wands in reverse, the Knight of Wands in reverse, the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, and the Magician in reverse. Yeah. So the Three of Wands in reverse is delays, right? It's like you're standing there and you're like, where is it? Why is it not coming to me? I know it's meant for me. I feel it. I feel it. I know it's meant for me, right? Like I said, your mind's there. And with the Knight of Wands, it's like you're so much putting so much passionate and fiery energy into this, but it's like you're teeter-tottering on this non-committal energy of, is this really what I want to invest in? And I feel that's partially because there's this discouragement coming in with the nine of pentacles in reverse that's my card of insecurities someone who's kind of like waffling on whether or not this is truly meant for them but it's simply because what you've been manifesting has not yet come in it hasn't materialized in the physical bottom of the deck is the ten of swords in reverse right so it's that energy of you're not yet done with an old cycle it's the dirty water theory you're the water bottle. You are filled with ten swords. You have no space for what it is. You are knight of pentacling, right? What are you, what you're pursuing for this new beginning? You can't have a, a new beginning because you are tapped out. You're full of dirty water. You have to pour out everything that is no longer serving you to have space for the new. I just made some space for you. Let's look at the knight of pentacles. Um, I want that one. Yeah, of course I did. It's a higher fence. That's funny. Bottom of the deck is the three of swords in reverse. Okay, so this is when the healing is starting to come into your awareness of the things that need to be released. Like, oh, this is what's in my heart space, right? So you're trying to build all, you have a lot of like observant energy around you. So I don't know if this is family members. It feels a little uh, judgmental, to be honest. Uh, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you making those choices? And I don't feel you feeling a need to explain yourself either. It's just kind of like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me do what I want to do right now. Like, to, don't bother me. That's kind of what it feels like. As soon as I looked at this Knight of Pentacles with the squirrel up in the top corner looking at them, it was just kind of like, leave me alone. Let me do what I want to do. Six of Pentacles in reverse and the Strength card. <sighs> This feels like people trying to help. It could be higher order energies trying to help, trying to assist you. And it doesn't feel like whoever this is that is doing all this manifesting, whether it's you or someone in your reality, being very receptive to it. It feels like a pushback, right? And then we have the King of Cups in reverse. So this could be you. It could be someone you're dealing with. And with the Five of Swords there, the Five of Swords in reverse I feel like this individual is working through overcoming limiting beliefs, their own inner critic, and stop stopping being so hard on themselves, right? Just trying to be there for them. And it's almost like they, they don't want other people to be there for them, but they do at the same time. And then we have the Queen of Swords, right? Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups and the Hierophant. I feel like the Hierophant, the Hierophant represents spirituality, higher states of consciousness, contracts, religion, institutions. It's also the teacher in tarot, okay? So the Hierophant has a lot of meanings. To me as a reader, it's also the rule book. It's throwing out the rule book. I feel that this is the reprogramming of this individual's mind, them also learning the lesson from the Hierophant, from the teacher, from their higher self in a sense that they need to be more receptive in the feminine because they might have been working from the masculine from the state of conflict, from not being receptive, right? From a closed heart space with the King of Cups, even though they have very supportive energy around them, right? They're just simply getting discouraged and wanting to push, reject things because they're feeling like their wants, their needs are getting rejected. And that's why the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups is here. It's learning the lesson to be receptive. The feminine energy is receptive. The masculine energy is product um, Productive in a tangible way is giving, right? Is very giving. Feminine energy produces manifestation from thought. It doesn't take action on things. Masculine takes action. That's a better way to say it, right? But the feminine is receptive. 
Let's look at the, the world. I'm gonna set the three of swords. Ten of Pentacles in reverse and the Fool. There you go. Okay, beautiful. It's letting go of the foundations that were faulty and also the commitments, the relationships, the contracts. So this could be a job, a living situation, a romantic connection, a friendship, a family dynamic that is just not stable. Realizing like, okay, I need to start this over. And with the Fool there, it, you don't see it as a risk now. You see it as an opportunity, which is really, really nice. I love this. A lot of cyclic energy. You have a 10, you have the world, and then you have the Fool. Beautiful. Very, very, very nice. I love this. You have a lot of divinity helping you through this process. Bottom of the deck is the Ten of Swords. Yeah. Big, big ending. Let's look at the Ten of Wands. <laughs> this is, this is going to be an energy of freedom for you, though. It's going to be a big emotional release. I don't feel like crying on the bathroom floor kind of vibes. I feel like oh, I can exhale. I can breathe. I want to see the Ten of Wands. Prince, this is somebody in your environment. Knight of Cups in reverse. They feel shut out. They okay. The choice isn't theirs, though. The choice isn't theirs. They feel shut out. Heard homeless. Um, I feel like this person wants to feel accepted. Ace of Wands. You're going to have a new contract with them. Seven of Wands. Oh, Lordy. Seven of Wands to me is a very defensive energy. Between the Seven and the Ace is a Six of Wands in reverse. Beam, and then the Devil in reverse. Okay, I don't mind the Devil in reverse. The Devil in reverse, and the Nine of Swords in reverse, and then Death. I like this. It's getting rid of the stress, the anxiety, the overwhelm, limiting beliefs, fears, everything that is a very attached or uh, addictive energy or something that we are holding on to so tightly that it's no longer able to expand or breathe or grow and evolve with us into the new form that we're growing and evolving to, right? It's releasing that toxic behavior. I feel that this individual is coming to the end of their own toxic behavior. They might have emotionally manipulative tendencies. They might uh, struggle to love themselves. They might feel that when you make a choice for yourself, it's not taking them into consideration. But in all reality, they need to be there for themselves. They need to be there for themselves, just like you're being there for yourself, right? And with the Ace of Wands and the Seven of Wands, there's a Six of Wands in reverse there. It, it, like a, it just feels like they're seeking external validation, and the Six of Wands is the card of uh, recognition, validation, right? It's someone who comes out of battle, and they're wanting this applause, like, oh, you did great. And in reverse, it's kind of like, where's my round of applause? Like, why are you not giving it to me? And so in this new beginning, they're very defensive with that seven of wands. The seven minus the ace is where I got the six. Okay, so just be mindful of that. I feel like that's someone in your reality though. Let's look at this ace of this. The ace is you two together. It is, it is. I know a lot of you want this to, it's your own thing, but I feel like this other, it's not like they're imposing themselves. They kind of, I feel like they've always been there. I feel like you're building something for yourself, but when I pull cards on it, this other person's going to pop up and we're going to see what, where your project or your endeavor is going, but then this person, how they're kind of lingering, watching. Like, but what about me? What about me? Well, what about you? Because right now I kind of got to do this for me. Let's look at Ace of Pentacles for Pisces. Nine of Cups in reverse, Queen of Wands, and the Ten of Swords. And what do we got over here? Two of cups in reverse. So they're lingering, lingering. What about our relationship? What about our dynamic? Well, right now I'm really focused on trying to feel like I can let go of this part of myself that is not confident in building my own happiness, right? Ten of swords. You are releasing that. That's why the ten of swords is on it, right? Releasing the part that questions or doubts your own personal ability to manifest and go after your own goals and endeavors. And that what that is what leads to the Ace of Pentacles, because you're closing out the Ten of Swords, the pain, the lack of faith in oneself to achieve personal emotional fulfillment. Because the Nine of Cups is personal emotional fulfillment. The Ten of Cups is about your environment and your relationships, your contacts, and everything external to self. Okay? Two of Cups in reverse. This is the other person like, what about us? We're on the back burner. Yeah, for right now you are. Okay. Nine minus the two gives a seven. Seven is the clarity, realizing that 
there needs to be the balance. There needs to be the ebb and flow. At times, we cannot always be consumed by our dynamics with other people. We do need to care for self because without self, there will not be a healthy dynamic with these other people. This looks like codependency. Let's look at the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Uh, I heard total contracts immediately. This kind of feels like like total in the sense of like something getting totaled, like something like getting just destroyed, destructed in some form. Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Let's look at this. Yeah, Judgment in reverse, Hangman, Nine of Wands in reverse, and Empress. Ooh, we'll, we'll take, yeah, I'll just take a few more. I'll take them all. Okay. And lovers, bottom of the deck. I feel like the person that is focusing on their new beginning, whether this is you or the person you're dealing with, whoever it is that is like, I need to do this for me. I need to create this for me, right? And they have somebody who's like watching over them. I feel like that person who's making things for themselves is realizing that this dynamic, this hovering energy is not in alignment with them. Judgment, right? It, it's, it's, um, it's distracting from the things that they want to pursue from themselves. And with the hangman, they need space from it. They need space from it, right? So they're no longer going to invest in it. Nine of wands, right? They're like, I give up on this right now. It's not something I want to fight for because I need to evolve into my empress energy, divine feminine, very receptive energy. And with the page of wands there, they realize this is going to be triggering a lot of the wounded child in this other individual, seven of swords, but it's going to force that other person to address their self-sabotaging behavior, um, but also like deceptive behavior. But they're going to release their self-sabotaging behavior by indulging and enabling that kind of dynamic because codependency goes both ways. It does. Okay. We have the queen of pentacles also in reverse, the sun in reverse and the star. This is the empress because the queen of pentacles is my mini empress card. So it's them moving from their queen of pentacles energy into the empress energy because they realized they had to shift out of distorted masculine into divine feminine, which is beautiful. So this is you. Congratulations. That's awesome. It's this understanding that this change had to happen. It had to happen. There had to be this shift from giving so much of self to others and the external and neglecting the needs, the hobbies, the desires, the passions that you once craved, right? And coming back to that. And with the star there, it was divine time to have this realization because there was this energy of oppressing self for the sake of the, the people or situations we felt obligated to, or even the people and obligations we did care for. Okay. Let's look at the seven of swords. Lovers, eight of swords. Yeah. It's recognizing that this connection, although it's very, very strong, has self-deceptive tendencies to it. And with the Eight of Swords between the Seven of Swords, it's it's not in alignment. The Ace of Swords in reverse is a card of alignment. It's a card of truth. It's a card of authenticity. It's not authentic right now because there is deceptive behavior present. There is. And with the Eight of Cups on the bottom of the deck, that is the emotional disconnect. It's saying, hey, like I need space from this. I need to walk away from this right now to achieve my Ten of Cups, my happiness in my environment, with my work, with my home, with self, because that means I'm working through my nine of cups too. Let's look at the magician. The magician. The magician. Tower in reverse. <whistles> Aries, Mars, Scorpio energy with the tower. And the high priestess, oh, that's your energy. And then the king of wands in reverse. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Okay, so we got a true pair because we had um, the queen of wands out here somewhere, I thought. I thought we did. Where did she vanish? I guess she vanished. Oh no, she's right here. King to queen of wands. Yeah, it was a shadow pair. King, queen of wands. Ta -da! Okay. Uh, when I say shadow pair, that's not a bad thing. It means that we're purposely triggering each other's seven of swords energy, right? To help us evolve into divine feminine. And it worked. It, it served its purpose, right? Relationships have a place, a time, a purpose, a reason, and some a season. You know that saying? A season, a reason, and a purpose, okay? And this was yours. It came in and there's this realization now of, okay, I need to step away from it. And there was a long time there that 
that was not seen. We didn't see that as much as there was this deep, deep attraction and, and physical attraction to this person, maybe even there was something more to it. The high priestess is this higher consciousness energy, right? It's beyond the veil. And the tower means that it was the purpose of this transformation was to bring you into alignment with your true authentic self. Okay? And it's doing that. Beautiful. I love it. Pisces, this is what I have for you. If you want a personal reading, a Reiki session, uh, if you want a mentoring session, or if you want to sign up for our in-person Reiki certification in May or the online certification in June, you can find it all through my website in the description box. I love you. I wish you the best. And like, share, subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. And I'll see you next time.